Hello, welcome to SmartBird 101. I'm your host, Robert Rocha. I'm a instructional technology specialist with the El Paso Independent School District. I'm really excited today to show you the latest version of Smart Notebook, which is version 11. Version 11 was released by SmartTech.com on April 23rd, 2012. And I'm thinking this is going to be a very big hit with teachers because it's a lot more intuitive for teachers to use how they interact with the toolbar, uh, how SmartTech.com actually uh, change the layout of Smart Notebook a little bit, I think it's going to make it a lot easier and taking out the mystery of how to use Smart Notebook with their students or in their classroom. So let's go and take a look at the new latest version of Smart Notebook 11 because I'm going to show you three different things. I'm going to go and show you how to actually use the interactive toolbar. I also want to show you how to modify that toolbar and some of the new additions that are going to be that have been placed inside the tabs area. So let's go to our computer right now and go and take a look here. So as you can see, my new icon on my computer screen says Smart Notebook 11 before it would say Smart Notebook 10. So I'm going to go and click on Smart Notebook 11 here. I'm going to go and open that up with a double click. And of course, they kind of changed the way the uh, splash screen looks there a little bit. It's a lot cleaner, looks a lot better. And there it is. This is our latest version. Now, as you could go and see inside our toolbar here, if they've added a, set of a single row of all the tools, they've kind of bunched them together and also made it double layers here. And so if I, I'm going to zoom in on my screen so you can see a little bit better. And as I, let me try that one more time. And there I go. Now, if you notice my very first set of tools that I have right here, all these uh, area, this area right here, are considered your action tools. And your action tools, uh, again, just like in the Word, they allow you to perform some type of action. For instance, I can go and use right, this button here to go forward and back. I can redo, undo a, an item. I can add a page. I can delete a page here. I can open up a file to look for a certain file that I wanted to go and look at. And below that, when I, of course, I have my, uh, my save feature to save anything I want to do within Smart Notebook. Now, the next big icon that you see here is going to be my uh, viewing area, how I want to view my screen. And again, before you always had the different monitors. You had the full screen, the dual page display, the transparency features were all separate. What Smart Notebook did is they combined them into one feature. So let me, get, let me go back to my regular size screen here, and let me click on my View Screens button. Notice it's highlighted in blue. I'm going to click on it because there's a drop down menu screen here. And when I do that, you can see now what they've done is they've combined all those features under one icon. So it makes it a lot easier for teachers to go and say, well, I know I want to do something with that particular monitor or my particular screen, but I don't know what I want to do. So I can click on it and it comes up. So I can now look at this and say, I want a full screen. I want to go to the transparency background, dual page display, or I can even modify the viewing size of my screen here, all the way down to say I want the entire page to be displayed, or I want to increase or decrease my page width. And so again, it just makes it a lot easier for the classroom teacher to use with minimal information to go ahead and use that. So it makes it just a lot, again, much, much simpler. I know I'm very happy with what the design that they've done within Smart Notebook 11. So let me go back up here again. And so again, I have all the same tools that I've, uh, actions that I've had before. If I wanted to do a screen capture, if I wanted the action of a school, of a uh, screen shade, deleting, my smart exchanges there, and so forth. Now, when you install Smart Notebook 11, the next icon I have here is my smart response system. You may or may not have that in your computer screen if you may have that product. But uh, since I have it installed, it places it right there in the toolbar at a separate icon. And when I click on that, again, it opens up the wizard feature where I can go ahead and add an instant question or want to go ahead and use, if I have my actual piece started up, I could be able to actually create another type of piece there or of a smart response. Now, as I go back up here, let me go back up, we go here and re blow this up for you guys to see it a little bit better at home. Um, smart Notebook, what they've done again is they've always combined the tools. And like I showed you earlier, all these tools that you see right here are all considered my, my actions because I want to do something. 
if I go back up here, that's my, of course my additional add-on tools that I've, that I've purchased or our, our district has purchased. And so my last set of tools that I have here, or my, my middle, uh, next set of tools I have here, is going to be all of my tools. And so these are the tools that I get to work with to create my particular piece. Now what's really interesting about this is notice before I have a, a set of pins here, of course all my different shapes that I have, my line feature, my fill feature, and of course I also have my erasing feature. So again, which is really neat, is once I select one of those tools, it opens up a third menu area or a third uh, box of the different property, of the properties tab. Now it's a minimal view of things, but things that you're more likely to hit or use over and over again. So that way you can actually modify the pins on the fly before you actually use the tool. So again, it takes the mystery of out of how to change the, the line style, how to change the, the color of the pen. So let me go and take, uh, go back to my regular screen and show you what that looks like. So I'm going to escape this here. And for instance, I'm going to choose a pen. Now in our previous versions of Smart Notebook, you had, you, you, each pen had a different icon. So you said I wanted, let's say I wanted a creative pen. I would click on the creative pen. But here they kind of bunched them together. This is letting me know that I want the pen. So when I click on it, let's go and see what happens next. So I'm going to go back to my computer screen here. I'm going to click on my pen and voila, what do I get? Another property menu here opens up. Let me say, okay, here I selected my pens. Now these are all different pens things that are available to me. So when I click on the main pen here, notice now when I blow this up, I can choose whether I want a regular pen, I want a calligraphy pen, a crayon, a highlighter, creative pen, a magic pen, and shape recognition pen. So let's say I want to go and just use a a uh, crown, because that's going to be the latest, that's a new addition to Smart Notebook is the crown actual uh, piece here. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my regular size screen, and I'm going to go and select the, the crown. And notice now, when I did that, I can choose what color I want my crowns to be. All the different color selections are there. And if I didn't like the selection that was already pre-selected for me, I can always go to my tab feature here, go to color, and I can choose other colors if I wanted to choose something that was not available to me immediately. And of course also, I can change the line style. Let's say I wanted to make it a fat crown or I wanted to make it a thin crown. I can click on that icon, as I do here, and I can automatically see and choose how I want that pen to work before I've actually done anything with that pen. So it just makes it much more easier to use. So let me go ahead and choose a, 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 the regular default style. And I'm going to go ahead and just start using my pen. If I, I'm going to go to my board here real quickly here. You can see how I just use my fingers still. And I can go ahead and just go and start to, to actually it's not working very well for me. Uh, I'm not sure why. But that's OK, because when things, sometimes when we're doing technology, things don't work very well. And so we have this thing that's called unexpected behavior. And that's OK. We can always go back and try to figure out what it was. Probably have to go back and recalibrate my screen here. But I'm going to go back to my computer and continue on for a show and show you all the other different pieces of that particular toolbar. So as you can see, if I wanted to go and choose a line style, all the different line styles that are created are going to be there at my fingertips. Again, much simpler, much easier to use with the actual uh, with the smart notebook. Now, Let's go and say here, well, I've got all my tools there, but you know, uh, there are some tools that I had before that I don't see here that I wish I could add them to my toolbar. Well, how do I go and do that? In the previous version of Smart Notebook, it was kind of hidden. You had to right click on the toolbar up here, and then the, the actual properties tab would open up the settings button, and you could actually drag and drop the items that you wanted. So, but unless you knew that, it was kind of hard to modify that. But so Smart Notebook listened to teachers and thought of how do teachers use this in their classroom. And look over here at my screen. On the very far right, you're going to see a, a gear cog. And when I click on that, that changes all the settings for my toolbar. So when I click on that, I open up my toolbar. And again, it categorizes them into two different areas, which is really great. It categorizes them again into actions or into different tools. Now notice when I did that, when I highlighted actions, 
I can only drag and drop the items from here into my actions portion of my toolbar. When I click on the tools, only, I can only drag and drop to that particular section. So that, again, makes it a lot easier to use, and you're not clogging up and cluttering up your toolbar. So let's say I wanted uh, a tool of a, a called pin the, uh, sorry, an action of pin page. What I can do now is I can click on pin page, and I can drag it there. Now, if I wanted to make it a smaller icon, I can go ahead and just drag, drag it on top of another one, and it puts it inside as a smaller piece. Okay, well, let's say I didn't want that. Let's say, for instance, our district doesn't have really have a lot of smart tech document cameras. So I'm not going to use that particular feature. So I can drag the smart do document camera out into my uh, floating uh, menu window here, and it gets rid of the actual toolbar. So let's say now I want to add the smart video player, but you know what? I don't want to make it a small icon like this. I want to make it a large icon like this one over here. If I drag it out to the side or in the middle of one, I'll drag it here to the side. Now I can go ahead and actually uh, have a large icon there. And so you can kind of see how I did. Let me see if I can blow that up a little bit better. So I, what I simply did is I just dragged one of these icons and I just dragged it up to the very top so I can make it a small or larger icon that's there. Now once I finish modifying, my particular tools, I'm going to click on the done button on the bottom left of my, I'm sorry, bottom right of my screen, and I click on done. Okay. So once I'm here though, that's pretty much how you, you interact with the toolbar and how you modify the toolbar. Now, if you're looking at my, my screen here in just a moment, you're going to see that in addition, they've added an additional tab. And that's going to be a very powerful tool, and I think you're going to really, really enjoy it. If I look over here to my, back to my computer screen, they've added this little pu puzzle piece right there. And when I click on that, that's going to be called the Activity Builder. And that is an awesome tool. And in another video segment, I'm going to take you through how to use that activity tool. A lot of times when we wanted to create interactivity, we went to the Lesson Activity Toolkit to be able to drag and drop items where they would fly out or uh, like say the vortex items where you would drag a, a category up to a, the vortex and it would spin and it would either uh, absorb it or kick it out if it was the right or wrong answer. With the Activity Builder, you can do those same type of activities. You can associate images together and, and also sound with actions that the students have do. So you can move an object to another object and say if that's a correct one, it'll go ahead and you can modify to spin or uh, fade out. It's a really, really neat tool. Now, this show only covers some of the basic pieces. There are a lot more things on Smart Notebook 11. So I'm, I'm hoping you join us for the other segments to kind of show you all the different pieces of Smart Notebook 11. We're going to try to put out two shows out a week. And you can always come back and check and see if our, our new show is about Smart Notebook 11. Um, we also have a Facebook page. If you want to go to EPISD TV on Facebook, you can like us on Facebook and you can go ahead and see all the lit list different videos that our studio has been pr uh, producing. Uh, and also all our channels are available on YouTube. So if you want to go to our YouTube channel, you can go to EPISD TV under, under a search. And all our videos that are, again, that our studio has been producing will be on there. But this pretty much wraps it up for today's show, and I hope you liked it. I hope you uh, install Smart Notebook 11 and get to use it, because I think you're going to really enjoy it in your classroom. Bye-bye.